Are you collecting data from your business to train an AI model? Most likely, you are storing it in the wrong format. In this video, I will show you how you should collect data so you can train machine learning models with it. Hey guys, I'm Calvin Fernandez, your AI advisor, and welcome to another AI shot. You know, it's pretty common that a lead comes to us and they tell us, you know, I have been storing all of this data for the last two, three, five years, and now I'm ready to work on building this AI model and transforming my company. And then we go, we're super excited, and we say, yeah, let's go for it. And then we see the data, and you know what? Sur surprise, surprise, the data doesn't work. They haven't been storing the right data. So it's like, you know, all of these wasted opportunities so many years collecting the data, and they just didn't store it in a way that we can use it for training an AI model. And in this video, we will show you what data you need to collect and how you need to collect it so you don't do this yourself and you can start collecting the data that you will need to, at some point, transform your company using AI. And of course, if you are collecting data, most likely you want to build an AI model. And if you want to do that, in the description, there is a link for a free preview to our building grade data sets course. Check out what we have there for you. Okay, so why I say this kind of data that most likely you're collecting doesn't work, because most likely you're only keeping the latest version of that data and not the whole trajectory on how that data evolved. So what do I mean with this? Let's say that, for example, you have an e-commerce website with a sales funnel on top of it, and most likely you're only keeping the latest price of a given product. You're not keeping the whole trajectory of prices for that product, and then you want me to build an AI model that says how many sales this product will have in the next 90 days. And then, of course, of reserve price, I only have the final price, not the, not the intermediate prices. So I don't know how this demand versus price evolved over time because I don't have that data. You only kept the same variable inside that product that set price. You, have, you keep updating it to the final price. You don't know the trajectory. Same thing, for example, for, for customers. Let's say they went from being a lead to being a customer to then churn. If you don't keep track of all of these changes and you only kept tra track of the latest status, which is whether or not the contract is active, you won't be able to train a model that looks at the past and says, you know, in the past, this is how this client behaved. In the past, this is how this product behaved. Why? Because they don't know how, what is the picture of the past, right? They only know what is the current version of it. And in machine, in AI models, machine learning models, we need to have the data as close as possible as it was at the time that the data was supposed to be used, okay? So that's the main problem. The same thing for real estate listings, for example. Let's say you have a website for a real estate listing and you want to know how many days a property will be on the market. And of course, properties change prices. You know, landlords realize maybe their price was too high or maybe, you know, they put it too low and they see a lot of leads, so increase the price. If you only keep the latest price, you won't know how many days that property will be on the market since day one because that price will evolve and this happens for everything it's not just price it's not just customers it's, it can be specifications of a product you know if you change sizes if you change colors whatever so keep track of all the changes and in this video i will show you three strategies to actually store the data in a way that can be used for emails or maybe not let's go for it so the first strategy is what i just described keeping the final version, and this version I already told you, you won't be able to train an AI model with it. And the reason why people just keep the latest variable, the, the latest version of it, uh, for example, price, job position, description, patient treatment that you apply, whatever, is because it's super easy to do. You know, it's, you just have an object in your database and you just keep updating the data that that object has, and it has a very low uh, storage footprint. So that's an advantage, but you won't be able to train AI models based on this kind of data, okay? So we go for the second strategy, which is keeping snapshots, okay? And basically you recurrently, like every month, every week, or every whatever you are willing to do, you keep a full snapshot of your database. So whenever you want to train the, your AI model, you can look back at how the data was at that point. And whenever the AI model is training for any given date, it will just need to look at the latest valid version of the data that was active at that time, okay? The advantage is that it's super easy to implement, so most databases allow to do this kind of snapshots, but there is a major disadvantage, which is you will have a super huge footprint on memory, okay? So memory will explode. For example, if you are only taking, let's say, one snapshot per month, you will have 12 times more data than only the final picture, okay? If you are capturing weekly snapshots, you have around 52 on a year. And if you're taking daily snapshots, you have 365 times the amount of data only for capturing one year of data, okay? And this, of course, 
multiplied. So you see that snapshots, yes, they are easy, but they have a massive footprint on memory and memory costs money. And then all of this processing of this data will also cost you money. So I always go for the third strategy, which is you store changes, you store the trajectory. So store any change that happened, including when it happened. So your data scientists can recreate what was the state of the database at the time that the prediction should be generated at the time of the training. So what are the pros? Data will be super rich, okay? It will have very high quality to train your AI model and I already have this video of coverage in, coverage out and how it impacts data uh, predictive performance. And you will enable tons of use cases if you keep the data in this format, okay? And it has a relatively low footprint when you compare it with the advantages it provides, okay? The main disadvantage is that it's super hard to implement sometimes and you'll say, okay, it's easy, you know, whenever there is an interaction, then you register the interaction. Yes, but sometimes interactions are smooth, are kind of subjective, whether or not there was a change. So change detection can be tricky for some data types, but if you have like solid reasons for understanding that there was a change because you move an employee from one department to the other, you change the position of the camera, you change the price of a product, whatever, just keep track of all of these changes on values so you can recreate this whenever you are training an AI model. Again, I always prefer the third strategy. You keep changing, you store the changes. We can work as data scientists with a second strategy, which is working with the snapshots. It's not ideal, but we can work with it and stop using the first strategy. If you're only keeping the latest version of your data, assuming at some point you will train an AI model, let me tell you, you're wrong, that won't happen. So migrate either to the, to the second or ideally to the third strategy. I hope you like this video. Hope to see you soon. Bye-bye.